To me, one of the top three reasons why I love interior wraps is the design freedom. So in this case, there's a whole series of videos on wrapping this flat in Amsterdam using interior film, and there's a great video on how to wrap this wall with this wood grain film. It's actually two horizontal pieces, definitely worth checking out. And that wood grain finish is awesome, and we basically use that same material on an IKEA mirror, which you see above the mantelpiece right there, and also on the bench, which you're about to see wrapped as well. So very cool in the sense that the design elements match from, let's say, this living room area in the kitchen, and it's very easy and straightforward to do. So with that, here's the bench that is going to be wrapped, and why this particular bench was chosen was a couple of reasons. The legs of this particular bench match the table, so there's good continuity there, and it was a really good price. It was normally $175 and on sale for $40. And the reason why is, you know, the finish of the wood is okay. You can see that the lacquer that they put on is super uneven. So in terms of quality right now, not super high in terms of what came from the manufacturer, but with interior wrapping film, we can actually make this look brand new and it's gonna match the wall in the living room and the IKEA mirror. So it works for your pocketbook and for that design factor as well. So it's a big win-win and that's another reason why I love interior film. So with that, let's get to prep. All about cleaning here, so being super thorough, making sure the underside is clean, and all those little open edges in those slats right there. So just definitely take your time. And now in this case, adding an adhesive promoter right now is a slightly sealed surface, so using one that has a solvent in it, making sure you get full 360s on the outside, underside, and in between the slats. Definitely want to allow it to dry, and then once it dries, now it's time to prep the piece to put on. So here in this case, you have the grain, so it's going to go horizontal, and make sure it's nice and symmetrical so the grain looks nice and uniform. Don't want to put this on crooked. Once it's in the right position, and I'm actually using the grid on the back side of the liner to match up with the edge right now. So you see that line of the grid right there matches the side right there of the bench. And then I actually crease the panel. So this is a very easy way for me once I flip the panel over to line it up. So here you're going to pull the liner up just a little bit. Obviously you can't use magnets fold the liner over right there to make it very easy in terms of grabbing and also kind of making sure it lays flat. Flip it over and this adhesive is super aggressive. That's why I'm only exposing a little bit of the adhesive. Match up those creases with the edges so now it's nice and uniform. Squeegee it on and now I've created my permanent hinge, rock and roll. So once that's set, it's all about getting in a good rhythm, pulling the liner and squeegeeing at the same time. Don't want that adhesive to touch too soon. And once I've squeegeed from front to back, now it's time to do the corners, which I'm gonna do in one piece. So now I add heat, make sure it's nice and warm. Really wanna make sure that film is thoroughly, thoroughly heated from top to bottom. And now I'm gonna stretch it out and hook the underside. Definitely gonna wrap these corners in one piece so it's nice and smooth. Pinch the corner so it's on, and you can see that by doing that, you get some wrinkles left to right and on the underside. So we'll show you how to finish that in a little bit. Very important to kind of set these corners up first. So on each corner, I spread the material, do a little bit of the shimmy, and then hook it right onto the underside lock it down and once all corners are set then i want to make sure i get a nice good seal on that upper corner so i heat it form it and pinch it and now it's time to stretch that material kind of towards the middle so i heat it and then pull it not too hard because i want to make sure that that grain pattern is not too distorted on this side so i stretch it towards the middle which can eat some of that tension so i heat and then pull at a 45 degree angle and i'm just pulling it right to that middle section which shifts a fair amount of tension from the corner into that middle section there, which is going to help for the corner durability long term. So once that's set, then I repeat the exact same steps on all the other corners. Heat, pull towards the middle, lock it in place. Having an application glove is absolutely critical right now. And now I'm going to shift gears a little bit. So far I've used fairly traditional techniques, but here I put my heat gun setting on medium and I'm actually heating the film very thoroughly, lightly holding it off the surface. And because the film is calendar, and it was made left to right in terms of manufacturing. By heating it, it actually shrinks towards the bench by itself. That's called zero stretch. So by adding heat and letting the material shrink naturally, up from the tension that was built in from the manufacturer, I actually wrapped the side of this by itself. So even here on the underside, adding heat, and basically you can see the material kind of relaxing and shrinking into that edge, and then I seal it down. That's a huge tip for eliminating any type of tension on the edge. So with the material to the underside of the bench now, I pick it up, place it on a table, in this case on a cutting mat so I don't scratch the table itself. And now it's time to focus on the corners. Because the material is heated and stretched from the top towards the underside, the temptation for the installer is to grab the material, heat it, and then force it underneath. But definitely don't want to do that. You want to make sure the material is nice and flush to the corner. And now here, essentially make a double relief cut right now. So we make two long horizontal cuts, basically on either side of the tip of the corner. 
So by doing that right now, you get basically three sections now that are going to fold under. You want to take the middle one first, add a little kiss of heat, and stretch it towards the underside. Once that's set now, you can do either side. So here, give a kiss of heat, fold it over right now, and now you're basically kind of taking the material just to the corner and creating basically like a double overlap on the underside. Why I like this is it's really good in terms of eliminating any type of that tension. So you can wrap the full corner from top to the underside as long as you finish strong. If you try to take it under in one piece, it's definitely going to lift over time because you're wrapping a very low surface energy with a very thick film this calendar. So you get the one piece glove right now in terms on the outside of that corner where the clients are going to see it, but the, basically the underside, you're going to get that double overlap, which is really, really critical for that long-term hold. So it's all about clicking the blade, making sure it's nice and uniform under here. But I love this double cut corner technique because you can see that high quality and durability combo. So here on the base of the leg right now that touches the bench is basically a tuck and cut. And then make sure you want to make a relief cut so the material can fold under on the underside about a quarter inch past this for the left and right by the base. So here clicking the blade and now that all the material is on the underside, I want to make sure that this cut is nice and uniform. So anyone grabbing the bench right now feels a nice symmetrical line. Definitely don't want to have this jagged because they feel a jagged edge. They're definitely going to start thinking, well, maybe this is wrapped. And the goal is that they think it's actually the original wood that came from the manufacturer. So everything's sealed and clean, super symmetrical on this underside. And for the long-term durability, especially because of the surface of this type of table, it didn't have full lacquer on it. It wasn't fully sealed. I'm putting this piece on the underside left to right, almost like an edge seal tape just to ensure that extra long-term hold. Don't have to do this all the time, but I'm doing this based on the surface energy. So good long-term hold, just taking those scraps, make sure it's nice and symmetrical, and now adding heat to make sure you get a good tight seal to the surface. And the final stage right now is cutting out those little gaps of the slats right there. So super sharp blade, we'll set it up with a finger right there in the application glove, slight beveled away cut right now, so it lays flush on the surface basically kind of hook the ends right now. So start on the long point, hook the ends, and then basically finish with the long run on the other side. The thickness of the film kind of holds the material off the surface. So as long as you get the angle right, it goes super smooth. And here's a shot of the final result. And as you can see, within just a matter of minutes with the right prep and install techniques, you got a bench that went from looking fairly cheap and not so great to one that looks absolutely amazing and it matches the living room wall, which is a win-win. So hope you picked up a lot of great tips and tricks, especially on that corner technique of how to wrap those in one piece. Thanks as always for being a member of the Rap Institute. Cheers.